Now let's review properties, styling, and events on repeating lists. Let's take a look at some additional properties. So if I select a repeating list and go to the properties tab, we've already set the list display page as the item row. The second property, the initial maximum number of list items to display has a default value of 50, but you can change this to anything you like. If you remove it completely, that means that it will display all of the data that's returned based on the data tab. So in our case, it would just be the filtered set of items that are type A. If I put a small number in, like say two, you can see that it will limit the number of items displayed to just that number. You'll use this property in concert with the next property, which is called when to load more items. So if the data has more items to display than the initial maximum number set, you'll use this setting to determine when to show more of them. By default, this is set to never load any more items. So it will only always show the first two. You can change that to button click, meaning that the user will click a button in order to add more, or on scroll, meaning if there are more items to display than can be displayed on a page at a time, when the user scrolls down, it will load more in. If we select button click, you can see that it actually adds a button to our display here. We also got two additional properties to fill in about the button. The first one is the text to place on the button. You can change the button text here, and it'll change it in real time. So maybe I just wanted to say load more. You can also select and edit the style class that determines the look of the button. So you can choose any style class from your project, and you can edit it from right here. Let's change that back to never load more items into the default of 50 max. The last property is the data collection field for sorting. So if you'd like to order the items in your list, you can choose the collection, which is gonna be items in our case, and the field to order by. So I'd like to order it by item name. And then you can also choose the sort method, which is either ascending or descending. Repeating lists use mixed sorting. So that way numbers will be sorted as numbers and text will be sorted in an alphabetical order after the numbers. This means that if the selected field contains some numbers and some text, the data will be sorted appropriately. To style your repeating list differently, there are two parts to that. The first is on the item row. In the styling tab on the repeating list row outer element, we have a list row outer style class. I can click that to edit any part of the styling that I'd like. So if, for instance, I wanted to change the background color, instead of just white, let's make it a little bit tinted red here. And you can see that in real time, it updates across. You can also make changes to the repeating list styling itself. Every repeating list has a repeating list style class that's shared across all repeating lists in your project. If you wanna have different outer styling for one repeating list versus another, you can either create a different style class for one of them and leave the original one on the other, or you can override certain styles for that particular repeating list with inline styling and utility classes. Let's take a look at the events tab for repeating list. Events in Builder are how you control what happens when users interact with the elements on the page. Different element types have different events available. The repeating list has three default events. The change event runs anytime the data inside of the grid is updated. And it will run whatever flow you select. So for instance, if you added a count text box to each of these type repeating lists on the page, and you wanted to update that anytime the data is modified, you would create a flow for the change event that updates that value anytime there's a change to it. The scroll to end event will run the selected flow when the end of the list items inside the repeating list has been reached. So this is commonly used to display some text to let the user know that there are no more records to display. The after search event runs the selected flow after the repeating list search action has been performed on the repeating list. So if you were to add a search box to one or both of these lists of items, you would use the repeating list search action to run the search, and then after the search, you could run a different flow to update anything you need to. 
So that's it for the basics of repeating lists. As always, thank you so much for watching.